Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Finds Out Is Reincarnation Truth and Left Ria's Peerage Part 2. Chapter 5. Preparation for the Big Battle. The next Ria said with venom as she saw who appeared out of the magic circle. Out of the circle stepped a young looking man that appeared to be in his twenties. He had short blonde hair and dark blue eyes. His outfit was a burgundy blazer with matching pants and black shoes. Underneath his open blazer was a simple white shirt. Ah. It's been so long that I have set foot on earth. Voiced the young man. Riser. What. Are. You. Doing. Here. Rias questioned as she tried to keep her voice neutral, but it was obvious that she was very close to exploding. Ah, Rias my love. Have you forgotten already about it? Replied the now named blonde man as he took her arm. No, I didn't forget and it was agreed that I have at least until I graduate from college in a human world. So I ask you again what are you doing here? She said as she yanked her arm from his grasp. Seeing this and not knowing about anything that was said or what was the talk about, Issei decided to ask the obvious question that was on his mind. Um, what the buck is going on here and who is this guy? Issei, this here is Riser Phoenix from the Nobel House of Phoenix, Kiba politely answers making Issei look at him. And that means what? He questioned again, still not understanding the situation at all. Riser seeing this exchange decided to intervene. Riser is surprised that a simple peasant doesn't know who I am. The Riser is disappointed in Urias. I thought that you told them about Riser. He said while referring to him in a third person making them want to facip him. Hard. Who are you calling peasant? You overgrown fried chicken. Issei demands as he glared at the nobleman. Predicting that the fight is about to begin, Grafia decided to intervene. Issei, Riser here is from a noble house of Phoenix, as said he is also Rhea's fiancé. And thus they are in an arranged marriage. Issei was left stupefied with this info. While he didn't like Rhea's, he hated arranged marriages. What was the point in being with someone for eternity if you don't love that person? Rias was still fuming about an idea of having to marry a playboy devil who wanted nothing more than to buck her senseless. She wanted to get married to someone she loved and love her back. Not for political or any other thing just from love. She wanted nothing short of killing Riser, but she also knew that she didn't have power and experience to do it. That was why she had the Red Dragon Emperor. Even one as weak as Issei could beat him, given enough time to train. While she was in deep thought, Riser decided to take this opportunity to check out the other girls of Rhea's peerage, specifically her queen. Um on my dear let get married already, you know it's for the greater good of our race. He told her after he finished his gazing and grabbing her hand. That made her return to the real world, where she immediately pushed him back. For the last time, no Riser I will not marry you, I will marry someone that I love, and that loves me back she snapped at him, while her eyes turned red, and a scary aura surrounded her. If you don't want to marry me the easy way then Riser will do it the hard way. Riser said in a serious tone as he started generating extremely hot flames in his hands, ready to incinerate anything. What do you say Arias, if Riser burns you servants to ashes, will that finally make you see reason? He questioned as he was lifting his arm up and pointing the flames toward Issei and Raynor that were standing opposite of him. Finally having enough of this bullshit, Grafie released some of her power to terrify them and to make them take this talk like nobles, like they are were supposed to be she wasn't sure anymore. Enough of this. My lady, your parents and brother have expected this from you, so they propose a rating game between Lord Riser and you. She said as she was about to freeze both high-class devils to cool down a little. So they still don't understand. Fine I will accept what they propose. If I win I'm free, right? She stated as she looked at the maid who just nodded. Ha 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 ha, you really think you can beat Riser, Rias you are far too bucking weak, and is this all you have to offer in our match? Just five people, all of which are as weak as buck except your queen, she can maybe match my rook Shulin, and that is if she is lucky. And Riser has a whole set to boot. Riser arrogantly declared, as he snapped his fingers, and another magic circle of fire appeared with fifteen people exiting it, as the fire swirl around them for a few moments before returning to the circle and disappeared along with it. Issei hated to admit, but this fried chicken sure had a good eye for well-developed or some who had a potential to evolve their figures even further. Women that were present were very good-looking and hot. Some had breasts that could match Akeno's and Rainer's in her fallen form, while others had a little bit above average. Not that he minds, he welcomed good tits any time of a day, but what caught his eyes was a blonde hair girl that had her hair in a twin drill like curls one on each side, dark blue eyes that were mesmerizing, and she was wearing a pink dress with a darker pink bow at the front, she looked a lot like Riser, and if he had to jest, she was his little sister that was also good looking. As you can see Rias, Riser here accepts. Riser has a full set, and so Riser will give you a handicap, you have 10 days to prepare for the battle to come. Riser continued with an arrogant tone, knowing that he had this in a bag. Very well if both sides agreed with this then I, Grafia will inform the heads of both houses to your agreement, Grafia spoke before disappearing into a magic circular. 
Riser was about to leave also, but seeing that Issei was looking at his peerage with Leech's eyes, he decided to give a final display for today. Ubaluna come here. He ordered, as the busty looking woman with long purple hair that went all the way to her lower back, she also had purple eyes just like her hair color, and was wearing a navy blue tunic top with some golden accents and a white shirt that showed her large breasts that bounce and threatened to burst free from their prison, much to say delight. Yes, Ma as she didn't finish her sentence as Riser forcibly kiss her and again started to grope her in front of everyone. Issei was burning red with jealousy as this guy got to do this to a bombshell of a girl. The purple-haired girl could put to shame more than 80% of school's female population without breaking a sweat. Okay, fried chicken you had your fun, now get lost, you're annoying, Issei stated finally having enough of this bullshit after watching Riser do nearly everything to a member of his peerage, except for having hex with her. Riser sees that you are quite the foul-mouthed peasant and Riser will enjoy incinerating you in a raiding game if you survive till the end. Yeah, yeah we will see about that you KFC. Replied Issei as he looked Riser in the eyes not intimidated by a high-class devil in front of him. He was more afraid of Grafia if anything and she didn't even move a muscle and force all of them to go to their knees. Why you ungrateful you wait. Riser said, his eye twitching from the constant barrage of insults that the pawn in front of him said, Riser and his peerage finally left the orc, and the members of the said club finally begun to breathe normally. Well, that was until Rhea snapped at Issei. What do you think you are doing you, idiot she yelled at him as she tried to slap him, but Issei just grabs her hand before it could connect. What? He was annoying. He answered casually. You don't have any idea of what you're doing. You could be executed because of your behavior. Rhea scolded him. Even though he didn't interact with them that much after church incident, she still worried about him. Yeah, yeah. He said nonchalantly as he took a sit on a sofa that was nearby. After a few seconds the grimmery magic circular appeared and from it, Grafia appeared looking as regal as ever. The raiding game is in effect. Both heads agreed to it. You have from tomorrow 10 days to get ready for the upcoming battle. Use them well, my lady. Grafia informed them as she bowed and then disappeared in a flash of light. But that will give us just enough time to get strong enough to beat Riser. So all of you pack your stuff and we will tomorrow go to one of the estates that my family has and there we will train. Ria's informed everyone who all nodded in response. Well since it looks like all the talk about game stuff is over, we could talk about what were you doing with two normal girls and a sacred gear user in your house weakling. For the first time since the meeting started, Rainer spoke getting the attention of all the members present. Issei looked at her in shock and then in rage that she was spying on him again. And how do you now that you little piece of shit crow? He questioned with narrowed eyes as he gave her a death glare and started to release his aura that made her pale in fear. I, I was ordered by our king to follow you after school. So if you are going to let loose hell on someone leave me behind on your rage path. Half-breed answered quickly not wanting to get blasted by a rage-fueled dragon to oblivion. Issei turned his death glare to his king who was also turning a little white from sheer hatred he was emitting to her now as her knees started to shake a little, but she manages to somewhat steady herself to answer him since she was also in silent agreement with her bishop that if she didn't answer quickly enough she would get blasted to oblivion and that was something that she would like to avoid as much as possible. Yes, I ordered her to follow you since you were acting strangely. Now then, what were you doing with those girls at your house ice? She questioned as she also liked to know what was he doing and who was that sacred gear user. If she had a powerful gear then Rias could use her in an upcoming fight against Riser. What was I doing with them is not important to you my king, he said in a mock tone as he returned his aura and loosed his death glare, making both girls to start breathing normally again. But, since you are annoying as hell and I know that you will question me till the end of days you spoiled little princess, I will answer your questions. He finished with a smirk as he saw the angry tick mark on her forehead at the insult he gave her. RRR Ice you are so cute when you are pissed about something and your domination aura sure is a turn on. Giggled Akeno as she blushed beside Rias as her M side was in full forces at the intimidating and dangerous aura that promised a lot of hurt to anyone that opposed him. Making eye sweat drop as he looked at her blushing face that made her look even cuter. Okay, now on to the questions. What were you doing with those girls? Rias asked him as he looked from Akeno to her. I was talking with them, my king. Since as all you can see I started training to get stronger and I asked them, will two girls for help in another department? He told her. Not seeing the point to lie to her. Pervert. Kaneko chipped in with her emotionless voice as she hated perverts and Ice was the embodiment of lust. No 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 Kaneko, I wasn't thinking about that, you perverted girl, I said as he started to think that any time he said anything that had a girl in a sentence that Kaneko thought about hex or anything related to it. Then tell us what were you thinking about, my dear little pawn, Rias demanded impassionately as she wanted to know what he was doing. Well, if you must know. I was talking to them how to reduce my perverted side. 
Since seeing that both Raynor and you used it to get me, it would be nice to control that side so that things don't happen again to me. Happy now, princess. The pawn answered while looking bored which started to piss Drias of. Yes, now the next question, what about that sacred gear user you encountered? What about her? She pressed on. What about her? He asked. What do you know about her? Riaz asked. Oh, he knows a lot about her, don't you my dear darling spurt on Rainer as she was enjoying being on offense than on defense against the pawn. Issei was blushing at that thought of Chelsea and him being a pair. But you know her ice and you didn't tell me. The princess of ruin snapped at him which made him flinch a little. Well, yes and no. He answered. That made everyone confused. How could he answer like that? It made them suspicious at the thought that he worked behind their back. Seeing their looks of confusion and anger, Issei decided to elaborate what he said. What I meant by that is that I just met her yesterday and that I don't know what she wants with me. All that I know is that she was spying on me and to see if I had a sacred gear and what power level was I at if I had it. She said that since I was more or less equal to her strength that she decided to approach me directly than to do it like both of you did. Answered Issei as he looked at both the bishop and the king. He didn't mention that she said that she was from the different faction and that she was to recruit him to help her cause. Haha, <laughs> Ice you are really a womanizer. Giggled Akeno as she licked her lips seductively at him, she liked this more matured Ice a lot more than a perverted one. Well, I don't think I'm a womanizer, but thank you Akeno, Issei answered blushing a little. Didn't she tell you anything else? She did say that I will see her soon and that was it. Now that we finished this, when do you want me to come here with my stuff for the training? He said. Okay. Everyone the meeting is finished, I will see you at 8pm here, so we can go training. That's a dot Riaz told her peerage as they nodded and left. When Ice left the building he started to text Murayama that he needed to tell Cadis and her something important. Hey Murayama, can Cadis and you meet me at the park in about half an hour? I need to tell you something important. After about a minute or two he received a reply from the brunette haired girl. This better be good Ice we were just about to go training. Yup, don't worry, just come to the park. With text sent, he started walking toward the park where he was about to meet his two new tutors. As he entered the park he went to the first bench he found empty and sat there thinking about random things till the duo arrived. What he wasn't expecting was that after 10, 15 minutes to come face to face with a girl that was one of the topics on the meeting he had with his peerage. Well, who do we have here? What are you doing here all alone my dear? Said the voice that was very familiar to Issei as he turned around to see the auburn haired girl sitting beside him on the bench. Oh Chelsea, what are you doing here? You know that the devils are following me right? He questioned as he saw her moving closer and closer to him. Yup but don't worry. I came here to tell you something, my sweetheart. She replied in teasing tone that made Issei blush. And what is that you wanted to tell me my darling? He said in a sing-song voice as he saw her blush a little bit at his teasing. Well, since you are so sweet to me darling, I would tell you how you can defeat that, how did you call him, a yes fried chicken. Nice nickname you gave him by the way. She replayed in her sweet tone. That made Issei's eyes go wide. How did she know that he was about to fight a phoenix? How no one noticed her presence? There were one ultimate and two high class devils, and even they didn't spot her. H how do you know all that? Were you spying on me at a meeting? He asked feeling a little dread creeping up his spine at this girl. Yup. She said in a happy tone as she took a lollipop from her pocket and put it in her mouth. And? He questioned wanting to know what she was going to tell him. Well, if you want to defeat such a troublesome opponent dear you need to have either the power that can with one punch, destroy his fighting spirit or stop his regeneration and then beating him senseless. Or of course, use some holy objects to beat him that would make him surrender. She spoke as she patted Issei on the head seeing his head drop down. Braid and I don't have that much power or magic reserves to make his regeneration stop even for a few seconds. Holy objects are out of the question since I'm a devil and can't even hold them, let alone use them against him. He said in a defeated tone as he felt that all was lost even before he begun. You do have 10 days to train to get to a level where you can at least hold your own for a little while and give the others time to help you overpower him. She instructed, not wanting to see such a handsome man and someone that she thought cute to have a bitter look on his face. Yeah, I guess you are right, anyway I think you should leave before you are spotted by the devils. He said as he felt a little bit encouraged by her. You are welcome, well talk to you later my sweetie. See ya. With a kiss on the cheek she left him and again made him froze from the affection she gave him. Even though it was small Issei still wasn't used to it. This was all new to him and he liked it a lot. Not 10 minutes after Chelsea left, Cadis and Murayama showed up with their training bags. Here we are Ice, what was it that you wanted us to know that was important? Murayama stated as Issei stood up and looked at both of them and find it almost impossible to not look at their bodies. The things is that from tomorrow and for the next two weeks, I won't be in Kuo since we, as an orc, need to go training for an upcoming battle against the members of the Phoenix Peerage. 
That's what I wanted to tell you so that you know why I wouldn't be at school and for you two not to go on a rampage on me when I return. I hope you can understand this. Issei said as he bowed his head down in an apologetic way to show how sorry he was for not starting his training with the girls, but being a pawn of Ria's put Ria's priorities up and his down on a list of things to do. The two girls looked at each other and understood that he wasn't in a situation to chose what he wanted to do, but was more of a lion forced to go to the battle for her. So they decided to since they couldn't do much at least show him support in his upcoming struggle. When you put it that way, there isn't much we can do, but when you go to fight give a few good hits for us will you? Asked Caddis as she smiled a little towards Rhea's pawn as he looked at the two in shock. You two are alright with this? He questioned still not believing what he was hearing. Yes we are ice, we can't force you to stay, and as Rhea's is your king, you have to obey her. But we wish you luck in your upcoming battle and hope that you return in one piece. Said Murayama, as she hugged him making his face go full red from all affection he was getting from her. First was a kiss, now hugs he was seriously thinking that she was in love with him. Thank you, guys it really means a lot to me. He softly spoke as he returns the hug much to Murayama's joy. You are welcome I sent thank you for telling us about that, now come on Mur, you can hug and kiss him all you want later when he returns. We need to go training. Said Caddis as she smirked seeing her best friend turning crimson red with embarrassment. You are the one to talk, you also want to hug and kiss him almost as much as me. Mire Amari played back making Caddis now turn pink as her hair. Issei was left for a loop now, his mind couldn't process was falling for him also. He needed to ask Drag if that had to do anything with him. Since he wasn't sure what could make Caddis change her opinion on him from wanting to kill him to loving him. Mure Ame let's go now yelled the pink-haired teen as she was feeling very embarrassed that her friend told him of all people that she was starting to slowly change her feeling to him. All right we are going sheesh. Well, see you ice in two weeks. Mureyama told him as she also liked Chelsea not ten minutes earlier kissed him on a cheek as the two kendo girls left the poor boy in a semi-conscious state. What the buck just happened? Issei asks himself still not believing what he experienced in the last half an hour. From a surprise visit from Chelsea to a semi-confession of both kendo girls. It was too much for him, so he just went home to pack his stuff for the upcoming training field trip. It was now 8 p.m. and all the member of the orc were present before their king. President everyone is here, just as you ordered, Akeno informed. Good, now as I said earlier we are going to my family estate to train. It's a good place to practice and can you please make a transportation circle Akeno. Ria's explained the whereabouts of the training camp she would be taking them, as her queen nodded and started to made transportation spell to take them there. When we get there you all can get comfortable first, and then we will see just how much your current power is before having a dinner and calling it for the day, and tomorrow we will start real training, Ria's added just before the circle was done. Everyone nodded and a second later the transportation circle came to life as everyone stepped in and teleported to the camp. Well, here we are, Rhea spoke to the peerage as what they saw blow they minds well as says and Rainers at least. W what we are training here. Rainer stuttered as she tried to get her barrings but couldn't. All around them were mountains and forests with a stream that could be heard in the background. In front of them was a building that looked to be more like a mansion than a house that would be their base for next week and a half. Wow, this place is perfect to just sit back and relax. Stated the pawn of the group as he looked around him and saw that nature was almost too inviting to just relax and lose yourself to it. Yes, it is very beautiful here my adorable servants, but we are here to train, so go to your rooms, leave your stuff and meet me here in front of the house in five minutes, so we can see what we are working with. Ordered the king as everyone went to put their belongings in their rooms. Five minutes later everyone stood in front of their king waiting to see what she wanted. Alright, now that everyone is here we still have enough time to see what are we working with. So Rainer and Ice you two will show us what can you two do. Since I know what Akeno, Kiba and Kaneko can. Rainer you're up first so power up as high as you can and try to destroy this rock. Rhea said as she pointed to a large rock that was about 30 meters away. If you insist princess, Bishop said as she started powering up and releasing her fallen wings. It took Grimory group by surprise that the once fallen angel now turned devil had this much power in her. It looked like Issei's gambit to recruit her paid off. Well, that is all I can muster princess now. How do you want me to destroy that pebble? With magic or power. Rainer said in arrogant voice seeing the surprised look on everyone's faces. First with magic, then with raw power. Was the answer she got from the king. As you wish. Rainer formed her trademark spear from light and threw it at the rock as hard as she could, when the spear hit the rock, it blow it to smithereens. But the satisfied nod, Rhea's made another rock for Rainer to destroy. Rainer took flight and hit it with all her mighty, destroying half of the rock, leaving the bottom part only. That was a good display Rainer, now my eyes your turn. But boost gear without. Asks the pawn as he stood in the position where Rainer stood only a minute ago. Hmm, let's see you without it first, and then boost up to the max, and then release all. 
Ria's instructed wanting to see how his month worth of training went and to see its results. Okay. Here it goes. Said Ice as he started to power up in his base form, after about minute or two he reached his limit and the results were shocking, to say the least, he was at the level and strength that was even with Kaneko with her rock trait, which was saying a lot since he didn't promote, but on the other side, he was extremely weak in terms of magic. Well, I can say that you did a good work during that month Ice. But you are extremely lacking in a magic department. How many times you can boost Ria's told him being very impressed with the result of her Pong. Um, not sure. I think I can boost up to 20 max, but after that wears off I'm left in such a weakened state that I need about an hour to get my strength up to use booster gear again. He answered as he remembered very well how he tried to boost to the max and how it felt after explosion wore off. So what is the max you can use that won't hinder you much? Riaz asks. About 10 is optimal, but 15 is the max that I can endure with a short break after it. He replied. Nodding to that Riaz pointed to the rock which was repaired and looked like it was made even stronger. I do have a new attack that I want to try, so this would be a good place to do it. He spoke to them as the booster gear appeared and started to give it signature boost. After a minute or so, Issei feeling that it was about enough boosts he called explosion and lifted his left arm in the direction of the rock. Concentrating on the attack a small sphere formed in front of the gear as it shined in red light. Issei pulled back his armored arm and then hit the sphere of red light as strong as he could calling the name of the attack. Dragon shot, when his armored hand hit the orbit, it released an intimidating laser beam attack that completely destroyed the rock and went tro to make a trench all the way towards the top of the mountain, where it exploded in a massive explosion that made a small earthquake. That attack blew everyone's minds, if anyone took that attack head on, it would leave the devastating result to almost anyone in a range from low class, all the way to weak high class. That was an excellent performance essay, we will work on your hand-to-hand -hand combat, swordplay, and speed, also endurance for you to have a chance to endure your current max boost and for it to increase. Magic is also important so we will work on that ladder during the training. Rainer we will also increase your magic and combat skills. Your magic is acceptable, but your physical strength is lacking severely. Their king informed the duo as the nodded in acknowledgement. But now I think that we could all go and relax for tonight before starting in the morning. With that said Ria's entered the house that would be their home for next 10 days with all of her servants following her. In the next few days Issei and Raynor were beaten to shit by the members of the peerage, Akeno almost reguari, left Raynor for death, and Ice was brutally beaten by Kaneko and embarrassed by Kiba's speed and sword skill. Of course, those punishments in Raynor's and Issei's mind did help in their stamina and they did learn some techniques and how to handle some situations. But during his magic training with Akeno when he was at relative ease, since she didn't focus on hand-to-hand -hand or sword Issei found that something was pulling him towards Norse and Slavic magic, more than toward devil magic, as his reserves of magic slowly build up, he could almost feel another presence in him though when he asked Drag about it all he gotten for the answer was that one of his predecessor was slowly awaking, and that is why he knew about those magics, but couldn't use them until the person that was awakening has full awakened. But as much as he tried he couldn't use even the simplest of spells that Akeno taught him which frustrated him a lot. Thought after almost a week into their training it was finally time for Issei and Raynor to duke it out so the others could see how much they improved. After their match, it was Kaneko's and Kiba's turn, and last was King vs Queen. Okay you two, it's time to see how much you improved, so go full force. Against Phoenix and his peerage, you will need to outpowered or outsmarted them to win. So when the two of you are ready to begin. Also Ice you can promote if you want said Riaz as she stood with others to the sideline, giving the two combinations enough space to fight. Well, it's time to show you weakling who is the superior here, Raynor spoke in her overly arrogant tone that started to piss off Issei. Yeah, yeah you wish little crow. If you have forgotten I was the one that beat the crap out of you when we fought last time. He answered in a confident voice as he thought about what piece to promote to. After few seconds, he decided and activated his sacred gear that immediately started boosting him. Promotion night, I said making the heiress think as to why he chose that piece when queen or rock would give him overwhelmed power that would easily defeat the bishop. When the fight started it was made clear to her why he chose knight instead of a rock or queen. When the pawn pieces turned to knight Issei exploded like a rocket towards Raynor, who had barely enough time to get away from a devastating blow that I sent at her. In retaliation, Raynor summoned two spears of light and threw it at him, who used his booster gear to block them as he made his way towards her with incredible speed. Seeing that her attempt to pierce him was a futile she just formed her spears and went into head-on on charge. As Issei tried once again to hit her with his armored hand, she used one of her spears to block, which proved to be a wrong move, as his fist smacked her spear like it was nothing and embedded deep in her stomach, sending her flying. 
As she recovered her barring she was immediately forced to move as another punch went towards her this time to the head as she dodged it, she could feel the raw power from the punch, as the tree that was behind her was hit with a shockwave that destroyed it in an instant, and anything in a 15 meter radius suffered damage from it. And that made her shiver in fear at the thought of what would have happened if that attack went through. Shaking her head she made 15 spears and sent them towards Issei as he tried to evade them, but was hit with a few that left him slightly injured. What are you a monster? Where did you get all that power? Raynor demanded seeing that her attacks were almost nullified. While you were sucking dicks and laying around I was training so that I can become as strong as I can you little crow. He answered as he dodged a few more attacks sent his way from now fuming full and devil hybrid. Why you I'm going to make you pay for that you little cockroach Raynor yelled as she started bombarding him with all she had, Issei was overwhelmed by the sheer number of spears and spells that he had to dodge. And every time he got hit it hurt him a lot. He knew he had to finish this quickly or Raynor would brutalize him with the amount of power she was realizing. As he dodged, he started to gather energy in his armored palm, reading it for a moment where he can spot a presentable sight to him to unleash his dragon shot that would surely secure him enough time to cross the distance between them and make her surrender. After a few more seconds he found an opening and let loose his ultimate attack. Dragon shot, he fired his attack just in time as more than 15 spears were near him. His attack completely obliterated every single spear that was in its path as it hurled toward Raynor, who seeing it put the strongest barrier she could muster. It was all for nothing as the blast ripped through it like a hot knife through butter. Raynor took the attack head on and was sent again flying, landing 50 meters away from the spot where she stood. She was drained from it as she was left unconscious. Issei was on his knees after that fight that took a lot more out of him, since he made that attack strong enough to destroy her barrier that he would admit was powerful. Bravo, that was an excellent fight Ice. Kiba please wake Raynor up, she also fought well against a power type like Ice. Ria's applauded as her knight went to wake Raynor up and help her come back to the group. Well done Raynor you made me proud. You managed to endure ran even damage ice in this fight. You come a long way from when we met. Ria's told her gently as she patted Raynor on the head. Yeah, but still not enough to beat him, Raynor spoke to her. Well don't sell yourself short, he did have a head start on you, and from the looks of him, he had to put out a lot of power in his last attack. Get some rest now. We have only a day or two to train before the game. She encourages her bishop knowing what is like to have your attack do so little damage. Next was the knight versus rock as they showed a very intensive fight that finished in Kaneko's victory due to Kiba's small durability and her brutal punches that were on par with Issei's with about 2-3 to three boosts. Finally, it was the grand finale as king and queen duck it out. It was a fight full of magic of all kinds. Ria's tried to overpower Akeno, but every time it looked like she was about to be a victor Akeno managed to pull a quick surprise attack on her king. In the end, it was decided to call it a draw. As no one was able to tell which would be a victor after half an hour of magic battle, leaving both teams tired. This combat practice continued for the last part of the trip. With changing partners for more efficiency. The last day of the trip it was decided that it would be a day to relax and to return all the stamina and energy that was lost and to everyone get closer to each other and have fun. That last day was almost torture to Issei, as both Akeno and Raynor tested him with their provocative bodies that made it very hard for Issei to not lose all of his self-control, which wasn't much to get on both of them, even if he was in a bad relationship with one of them. Ria's also joined in Buck Issei's mind fun as she started showing him all her body had to offer, which made his nose bleed and his brain to go offline. The day after his torture pleasure was the day that they were waiting for, the day of the big match. The match that will determine Ria's Gremory's fate. As Issei entered the orc building he privately felt anxiety that was building up. In the club room, everyone was doing their own things as they were waiting for the battle to start. Hineko was strapping her fingerless gloves that had a cat's paw on them, Kiba was polishing his sword, Raynor was making and dispelling her spears of light, while his king and queen were casually drinking their tea and talking about some other things. Issei decided to take a seat on one of the sofas that were in the room and have a quick conversation with his pal Drag. So do you think Drag, do we have a chance in this battle? Issei mentally asks his partner which was rearing to have a good battle. Yes partner, there is always a way to beat someone, everyone has a weakness that can be exploited. You just have to find it. Answered the mighty red dragon emperor. Yeah, but what if we are not strong enough to exploit it? Question Issei as he felt that even now that he can boost up to 30 times, it was still not enough to beat someone of a riser's caliber. You need to believe in yourself, partner. If you wish to go up and free yourself, then you need to start proving to everyone that you're not just someone that got lucky to have me. Drake spoke as he also hated to be under someone's control as much as his host. But Ice needed to overcome this obstacle in front of him to be able to move up. Yes, you are right pale as always. Thank you for reminding me of my goal. He thanked the ancient dragon as he was feeling a new fire in him started to burn. One last thing partner. 
I found out who is that presence that was waking up. And from the looks of thing, you will need only a little more power to awaken her. Stated Dreg. Her? Issei asked as he felt a bit of his perverted nature coming back at the thought of a beauty that might be awakening. Before Dreg could answer Grafia appeared still in her maid uniform form the magic circular. My lady, is everyone ready for the battle? Grafia asked in her regal voice. Yes, Grafia everyone is here and is ready to go. Issei's master answered as Grafia nodded and then created a new circular. Everyone please step onto the magic circular that will take you directly to the battleground. Good luck everyone instructed Grafia as everyone did what was told and vanish in the bright light. When the light died down they were at the exact spot where they entered a magic circular making Issei confused. I thought that we are going to the battleground, not to the orc clubroom. He stated as he looked around. We are ice in an artificial dimension and it looks like it's a copy of our school. That riser sure has some guts for doing this. Akeno answers him as he nodded satisfied with the information he was given. Everyone gather around me. It's almost time to start this game. So let's do our best and beat the crap out of this how Issei call his fried chicken. Ria's told them in a mighty voice to bring their spirits up. Yes, President all members shouted as all of them made a final quick check of their gears before the match. Now is showtime thought Ria's as she eagerly awaited Grafia to start the game. Chapter 6. Rating Game Part 1. As they waited for Grafia to announce the start of the game. Ria's took the opportunity to unleash what remained of Issei's sealed powers that his outburst at church didn't unleash. Ice, come here and sit in front of me, Ria's told her pawn in a calm voice that made him confused. Sure but are you sure that we could sit down and chat while the game is about to start? He questioned as he did what he was told. Don't worry, raiding games were created so that it would prepare devils on how to handle every type of situation. From blitzkrieg to a more objective type, like infiltration or capturing and holding specific strategic points that were represented by flags. Informed him Akeno as she just finished brewing tea. That is correct and you don't need to be worried Ice, I'm just going to unlock the power that was sealed when I revived you, Ria spoke as Ice did what he was told. As Ria's put her hand on his head he started gloving crimson and after a moment or two, he could feel the power in him rising as he looked at her with wide eyes. W what is this? What is this power I feel? He asked in shock at the new power that was flowing through his veins and couldn't help but feels awestruck. That power, my dear cute Ice is the power I had to lock up when you were revived. Your power is dangerous and leaving it Rinnenig wild would harm you even more. At the church you almost unleashed all of your power and all of us would be dead if you did, however, you were able to regain control over yourself before that could happen. She explained as Issei stood up and started to power up a bit to feel his new powers that were dormant till now. He felt like he could fight anyone and still be at the top. But Drake decided that it was time for him to get his head back to reality. Partner as much as I also enjoy your added strength, you still need a way how to defeat a phoenix, and that's not that easy even with your power. Drake stated as he too felt the increase in power of his host that surprised him a little that if he was a little more powerful than maybe he would get a balance breaker state earlier than most of his host would. Yeah, you are right Drake I need to focus now. He answered. At that moment all members of the Gremory and Phoenix household heard Grafia's announcement. Hello everyone. I am Grafia, a maid from the House of Gremory, and today I will be the arbiter of the raiding match between the House of Gremory and the House of Phoenix. In the name of my master, Serzich's Lucifer, I will be keeping my eye on this match. By using both Ria's and Razor opinion, we created this battlefield which is a replica of the school, Ku Academy, which Ria's attends to in the human world. The location where both teams were transported will be their base. Ria's base would be the Occult Research Cubs Club room located in the old school building. Razor Base would be the student council's room located in the new building. For the pawns to use promotion, please head to the enemy's base to do it. You have 5 minutes to strategies. After 5 minutes the game will begin. Your time to strategies begins now. So I need to get to fried chicken's base to promote. That would be difficult. Issei said after hearing what Grafia said. That's why my adorable little ice we are going to make a plan to help us get a victory here, Rhea said to her pawn. Gibba can you please bring me a map of the school. She requested her blonde knight as he nodded and left to look for it. It only took a few seconds before the blonde boy returned with a map with him that he spread in front of Ria's. Here it is President. President, if you would, I can make traps in the forest near our base so that when Riser's pawns make their way through there we can ambush them and put them out of commission. He said as he presented the map of school to Ria's and showed her where he was planning to set up his traps for the unwanted guests that would be making their way here. Yes, that looks like a perfect place to set them Kiba you go do that, while well, Akeno will create a mist so that they don't spot the traps. She agreed to his plan as it looked perfect for reducing the manpower gate between them. Yes president. Was the reply from both the blonde knight and priestess of thunder. 
Meanwhile Kaneko, I want to say and you to go to the gym and hold of Riser's pieces that will be there until Akino finish making her mist and when she gives you the signal retreat so that she can blow it up. And hopefully, take some of the enemies with it. After that, you will regroup near the track field with Kiba and push forward towards Riser's base. Ria's told her group. And what do you want me to do princess? Rainer questioned as she noticed that she wasn't mentioned in the plan. I need you to stay here and support me if some of the enemy's peace break through here. Since you have a healing gear it would be a suicide to send you to the front with others, on that note, if some of you are too injured retreat so that Rainer can heal you. Even if one of you are to be put out of the game it could be catastrophic for us. She explained her whole plan to the group as she knows that she would need all of them to beat Riser. Yes president. Came the reply from her group as they went to finish their preparations for the upcoming battle. The say, Rainer here, Akeno said as she gave the duo two small transivers. What are they for? Issei asked as he looked over the small transfer that he was given. That's for communicating with us during a fight. Everyone has one and don't worry each high class devil gets his set of transfers so that it can't listen in during the game. So when I finish with a mist I will tell you when to evacuate so you don't get also blown up he. Akeno snickered as her sadistic side began to creep up making both Rainer and Issei back away from her as they shivered in fear. Why yeah I will keep that in mind. Thanks Akeno. He said as he compassed himself to a task ahead of him. Your 5 minutes to strategies is up. The raiding game between the House of Gremory and the House of Phoniax begins now. Grafia announces as the school bell rings to signalize the start of the battle. Ring 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 ring. All right my adorable servants go out there and make me proud. Yes they all shouted as they left the orc building to face off against whatever Riser had to offer. The Keno immediately took to the skies and started creating a mist to cover Kiba as he started putting traps in the woods just west of the clubroom to ambush and take out any opposition that may come. Issei and Kaneko made their way towards the gym that was a strategic position from where both sides could come into direct contact with one another. In essence who controlled the gym controlled the field. So instead of controlling it and in fear of losing her pieces, Ria's decided to after getting the opening skirmish with Riser's pieces to evacuate hers and let her queen blow up those that were left inside. Kaneko what do you think? Do we have a chance against someone as Riser? Issei questioned as they were closing in on the gym with no opposition. Yes, we have. Issei, watch out there are three enemies that I can sense in the gym. Kaneko answered in her emotionless tone that made Issei wonder does she had any emotions whatsoever. Okay, thanks for the tip. Now how do we go about this? Issei must as he saw Kaneko going to the back door. He decided that it was time to use his sacred gear as it immediately started to power him up booster gear. He quietly said as the gear appears on his left arm. Booster egg voice was heard as he announced the power up. Well let's start this party, don't you think Kaneko? Issei asked her as she just nodded and entered the gym. Well look what the trash brought. Said a voice that Issei thought it belongs to a kid. Come on you douchebags, we don't have time to play hide and seek with you. Spoke another voice this time it was a lot matured than the last. Oi oi, stop with the insults we know that you are all arrogant, but sheesh this is too much, Issei declared as Kaneko, and he made themself know. So what do we have here a midget and a one of red dragon emperor? Said again the mature voice that Issei now saw came from the beautiful well-endowed young woman of Chinese descent with shoulder-length black hair and blue-green outfit, consisted of a navy blue kipau with gold accents, a white sash around her stomach, and black low-heeled shoes. Her outfit gave Issei an almost perfect view of her breast and legs that were on full display, much to his pleasure. Beside her, there were three more girls that in Issei opinion looked cute. Midget. Kaneko said in a low tone as her eyebrow twitched from that insult about her size. Well seeing that you girls know who we are mind introducing yourselves to us. Issei politely questioned as he would love to know those beautiful girls. My name is Shulin, the Rook of Lord Riser. The Chinese beauty answered while getting in battle position. My name is Mira. The blue haired girl told. Making Issei looked at her and he had to question himself as for how in the hell did she make her hair have four ponytails, of which two also wore red kimono with a white shirt. Our names are Isle and Nell. The twins shouted cheerfully. The lookalike, both girls had turquoise hair with a ribbon on opposing sides of their head, most like so they could distinguish between the war PE clothes, and in their hands, they had a chainsaw that made Issei step a back little at seeing that. Pleasure to meet you four. Kaneko how are we going to go about this? Issei spoke as he looks at Kaneko who had an emotionless look in her eyes. I will take the rook you take the pawns Issei. She answered as she took a battle stance before lunching at the rock counterpart. Slice, slice, slice Issei heard as he looked towards the duo voices only to see the twins running at him with their chains already to chop him to pieces. Bucky screams as he started running away from them only for a blue hair teen to stand in his way with her staff to block his way. As he saw Mira, she tried to hit him with her staff while the twins swung their chainsaw at him, Issei was forced to jump high into the air over Mira to escape from the massacre that would be if he was left standing. 
Wow was all that Mira said as her eyes followed Issei soar high above her before landing behind her. Wow, I didn't know that I can do that, Issei said in shock as he did something that till recently was only in his imagination. Slice, slice, slice he heard as he looked towards the twin sisters that were again charging at him with their chainsaws, ready to chop him into pieces. Oh, man can I get a break? Issei asked himself as he started to dodge the twin and Mira who join in. Whose drag voice was heard as Issei felt a power surge in his body. That's it if I can keep them at bay for a few more boosts then I can take them out in one shot. Thought Issei as he continued to dodge the attacks that were too close for comfort. Meanwhile, in the other part of the gym, Kaneko was facing Shulana that was said to have the power of the queen. Well, what do you say we start this fight midget, Shulana said mockingly, as Kaneko's eyebrows started twitching from the insults the rook continued to send her way. You will pay for that, Kaneko declared in a low emotionless tone, as she charged at the phoenix rook who entered the defensive stance. Kaneko threw a punch at Shulana who easily dodged it with little movement. As she continues to dodge her attacks, Shulana spotted a good opening, and with her fist coated in fire, attacked sending an uppercut to Kaneko who managed to dodge it barely, but in the process, her school uniform was half destroyed. You are not that bad, little girl, Shulana said as she started to bombard Kaneko with volley after volley of punches and kicks that she had a hard time dodging, as a few of those kicks and punches hit their target, making a young girl grunt in pain as she felt the full power of those attacks. You aren't bad yourself was the reply from Kaneko as she backflips to avoid another punch to the stomach. At that moment both girls felt some distortion in the air as they both turned to look at their pawns, who were fighting on the other side of the gym. Only to see Issei generating a small ball of concentrated red energy in front of his armored fist. Kaneko knowing what would happen quickly moved to the side as Issei launched his special attack at the trio who he was fighting. Dragon shot. Drag and Issei shouted in a union as the small ball of energy quickly transformed into a massive energy beam that headed towards the girls who were not quick enough to dodge it and were caught in the blast. Taking the advantage that her opponent was in shock at the sheer raw power the pawn had unleashed Kaneko grab Issei and started dragging him out of the gym as the three girls barely survived that attack started getting up and Shulan out of her shock. Hey, the battle isn't over. You cowards come back so we can destroy you in the name of Lord Riser. Mira yelled after the retreating members of the Gremory household. The Keno do it now. It was all that small white hair girl said as Issei and her left the gym only a half a second before a massive thunderbolt hit the gym, destroying it in an instant, taking with it four members of the Riser's peerage. Lord Riser's one rock and three pawns retired. Grafia stated. Good work Akeno. Issei praised her as she flew above them with her devil wings out. If you fifa thank you, Issei, that means a lot coming from you. Akeno said as she licked her finger while having a faint blush on her face at the praise. Lord Riser's three pawns retired. Grafia announced again. Sweet, that means Kiba took care of things. Issei started to cheer at the good start of the battle. With Kaneko giving a small smile as well. Just as they thought that they were in a clear Kaneko sense an incoming attack and pushed Issei out of the way as she took the full force of it. As the explosion rips through the area Issei and Akeno were left stunned at what happened. Kaneko, are you alright? Issei yelled as he quickly made his way to her just as blue light surrounds her. Yeah, Issei. I wish I could do more, but this is where it ends for me. Kaneko softly said with tears in her eyes as she vanished. Lady Rhea's one rock retired. Grafia announced in her neutral tone, Queen takes a rook. Now it's time for Queen to take the pawn. Suddenly Yubaluna appeared in all her glory with her devil wings spread wide open. Bomb Queen, Issei, get out of here and go regroup with Kiba, I will fight her. Akeno firmly told him as she was fully intending to duke it out with Yubaluna. But Akeno, yo. Issei started to argue only for Akeno to shot some of her lightning at him. Issei, I said I will fight her. Now get out of here before she takes you also. Akeno said, she knew that if Issei were to fall all was lost. Fine, you win. Kick her ass Akeno. With a heavy sigh, Issei turned around and started sprinting toward track field. Seeing that her target was running away, Yubaluna started to charge up her attack, only to abandon it for an evasive maneuver, as a Keno shooter lightning at her. Now, now. You leave Issei out of this. I'm your opponent bomb queen. A Keno sweetly said as her face and eyes showed that she was now in her S mode. DSK, fine thunder priestess. And don't call me that. Yubaluna said as she took her position waiting for her opponent to attack her. Good luck Issei, Kiba. A Keno said to herself before unleashing all her might on the riser queen. While the battle for the gym was underway, Kiba was hiding in the forest near the orc building, as Akeno was casting her Lushan and her own traps. Akeno how much longer? Kiba asked as he detected something coming his way. I just finished with traps Kiba, you are all set to that after you finish here regroup with Issei and Kaneko at the track field and move toward Riser's base, Akeno informed him as she took flight towards the gym to unleash hell. Understood, Vice President Kiba said as he took cover behind a tree to see what would happen. 
After a few minutes, he heard voices that he knew was the enemy. Walking through the forest were Riser's three pawns. Two were dressed in a manner similar to Grafia, and the remaining one was dressed like an Arabian belly dancer. That Grimory girl really thinks that she can beat Lord Riser. Spoke the busty brown hair maid as she and her companions made their way unknowingly towards Kiba. Yeah, that virgin heiress thinks that she has what it takes to take our lord out. Answered Silverhead Belly Dancer. As they were walking they triggered a trap that was set to activate just as they walked to a small clearing in the woods. Watch out. Yelled the silver hair girl as she noticed a sudden flash of red light that formed a gremory circle. From it, a torrent of magical arrows shoots at the trio as they in a nick of time managed to dodge it. That was a clever trap, too bad that it was wasted. Finally, the final member of the raiding party said. She was also dressed like her brown hair friend, but she had dirty blonde hair that was pulling towards brown. As her words left her mouth, Kiba decided to show himself to the girls. Hello. He said with a wave of his hand as he started approaching them. Well, what do we have here a blonde knight? What are you doing here knight? Arrogantly said the belly dancer as she and her two friends took their battle positions. My name is Kiba Yudo. Knight of the Lady Rias. And who are you three if it isn't a secret? Kiba introduces himself with a polite bow as he was a gentleman after all. Well, aren't you a polity knight? Since you are cute I will tell you. The dirty blonde told him in a sweet tone as she pointed at her two friends. The girl that looks like a French maid is Burent, and the girls that look like an Arabic belly dancer is Sharia, my name is Marion. We are the pawns of Lord Riser. The girl now known as Marion told him as he nodded his head drawing a sword. So, shall we start my ladies? Kiba politely asked as he took his position. Prepared for any sneak attack that the trio may lunch. And his preparation proved dividend as Burent started to shower him with magical attacks. Using his knight speed he quickly dodged the attacks and started to charge at her, only to quickly evade again, as Sharia came to close quarter to engage. Using his evading movement, Marion quickly grabbed Kiba from behind and put him in a headlock. What are you going to do no knight of Gremory? Marion questioned seeing that he had no chance of winning. At that moment they heard something that surprised them. Lord Riser's one rock and three pawns retired. Grafia stated. That's easy. And I apologize in advance. He said as a large Grimory circular appeared under all of them. Sword birth, Kiba shouted as half a dozen swords erupted from the ground, piercing the three pawn, making them vanish into thin air. Lord Riser's three pawns retired. Grafia announced again. Well, looks like my work here is done. Note regroup with Kaneko and Issei. Kiba said to himself as he started jogging towards their rendezvous point. His jogging turned into a sprint as moments later he heard a disturbing announcement from Grafia. Lady Ria's one rook retired. Grafia announced in her neutral tone. That's not good, that leaves us with Akeno, Issei and me. And I have a feeling that Akeno is fighting Riser's queen. So Issei is vulnerable. I better hurry. He thought as he picked up even more speed to come to his ally's help. Back in the orc club room Riaz and Raynor were cheering at the news of Issei, Kaneko and Kiba defeating their opponents, but that was short-lived as Grafia announced Kaneko's defeat, probably to Riser's queen. Well princess, what are we going to do now? Rainer questioned since both knew that Riser had plenty more manpower to throw around, while they have three members to combat them with both Ria's and her still in the club room. I think it's time for the king to move out. Don't you think Rainer? Ria's answer with her own question. Rainer just nodded and Ria's and she started heading towards Riser through the forest that Kiba made clear for them. Ria's knew that confronting Riser with only her bishop was dangerous, but she wanted so badly to finish this fight, and her overconfidence in her power made her make a move that would probably be very costly to them. Well princess let's finish that fried chicken and go home, I need my beauty sleep you know. Rainer joked to relive herself from the tension that was building in her as she saw how powerful Riser was. Yes let's finish this once and for all. And all of us go home. Ria's answered her in a voice full of confidence as she mentally geared herself up. Dust you wait Riser. I'm coming and I will blow you away. Was all that Ria's thought as she and her bishop quickly made ground towards his base. Ready to finish what she started. Chapter 7 Raiding Game Part 2 As Ria's and her bishop Rainer made their through the forest towards Riser's that was cleared by Kiba. Kiba was rushing towards the track field in a hope that he will be on time to help Issei in a case he was attacked. After about a minute or so Kiba arrived at the field track, only to see Issei barely holding out against his opponents. Quickly Kiba charged towards the members of Riser's peerage and managed to parry the blow from the busty blue-haired girl that wielded his wayhander before she could strike Issei from behind. The girl was wearing a white shirt that showed her cleavage and red shorts with knee-high boots. Now now, striking from behind isn't a knightly way of doing things. Kiba said as he still locked his sword against the blue-haired girl one. I may be a knight, but I don't give a shit about the coat of honor. The blue knight answered. With one push on both sides Kiba and Riser's knight backed off and gained some ground, while Issei was finally able to stand with Kiba's little distraction. Thanks for the save bro. 
Issei told the knight as he took a few seconds to catch his breath. How did you get into this situation in the first place? The blonde knight asked as he was switching his sword for a new one. When Kaneko was taken, Akeno flew in and ordered me to come here to meet with you so we could continue. But when I arrived I was met with all of them. Issei told him as he gestured his hand at the remaining members of Riser's forces that were led by a blonde hair girl wearing a pink dress. You peasant don't have a chance against us or my brother. Just give up already the blonde hair girl said. Ah, you must be Ravel Phoenix, younger sister of Riser. Kiba politely said to her, making her puff her chest in pride, only to fall face first when Issei spoke the next. Now I know why you look familiar. You are the younger sister of the fried chicken. Why you disrespectable peasant? Girls finish them both I don't want to dirty my dress. Ravel spoke an almighty tone that made both boys holding back the urge not to fasten them. Right away Lady Ravel. The members of the peerage shouted before they charged at the boys. They say, I will take the knights, you take the rook, the pawns and the bishop. Kiba spoke as he heads towards the knights. Issei stood his ground, waiting for the assault and still boosting so he could have a chance against them. After all, he was starting to get exhausted from fighting two knights, bishop, rook and two pawns for even a minute, who made some good hits on him. Um Andrag, is there anything else you can help me with? Issei asked in desperation as he started to think that he was going fighting a losing fight. There is one thing that you can do now partner. The ancient dragon spoke. And what is that? Issei asked as he dodged the punch to the face from the rook. You just need to get stronger to use another ability of the booster gear. Drag answered him that Issei somewhat worried. That's I don't know what to say to that. Issei spoke as he dodged another punch from the rook, only to be locked in place with magic chains that paralyzed him. The pawn started to let loose on him with volleys of punches and kicks. Ah Issei screams as he was brutally beaten by the trio. It looks like the fabled red dragon emperor is out. Finish him, girls. Ravel spoke in he arrogant tone as she turns around to observe her brother's knights were doing. She missed Issei's eyes turning from brown to green as a massive aura erupted from his body, blowing all of them away into the distance. As Issei finally stood up his aura started to flare, even more, his anger directed towards the Nobel girl that continued to throw jabs at him. But before Issei could do anything else, they heard a massive explosion that came from the roof. When they look up there were mixed emotions on their faces. Ravel and her fellow peerage members were actually smiling, knowing that their master has a checkmate, while Issei and Kiba were in shock that their master had done this very stupid and risky move. Thought what came next made them realize that they needed to get to Ria's ASAP. Lady Ria's queen retired. Grafia announced. The Keno was defeated, and that meant that another one of Riser's heavy hitters is on the way. Though they knew that Akeno didn't leave her without a few scars and bruises and probably exhausted as well. Still, Riser's queen was dangerous for both of them. In the other part of the track field, Issei battled the remaining Riser's pieces, whilst Kiba was battling Riser's knights. I must admit, you are pretty good to be able to hold your own against both of us. The blue-haired knight from before spoke as she swings her blade at Kiba. I also must admit that you two are very good swordswoman, and I enjoy fighting you. Kiba politely answered as he dodged her swing and parry a sword strike from the other knight. The other knight was light brown hair girl with green eyes and was in an armor that was mixed between European and Japanese. She had was wielding a double-handed broadsword. Yes, this is a very good sword fight. I would like to know your name knight of Gremory. The broadsword wielder questioned as she again parted her blade with Kiba's. My name is Kiba Yudo, knight of Gremory. And yours names ladies. He answered them as he backed off to get some distance between them. My name is Carloman, Knight of Lord Riser. The light brown girl answered as she gotten into her stance once more. And I'm Cirrus, also the Knight of Lord Riser. The Zweihander wielder told him. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Kiba politely said as he bowed little before taking up his own stance. Now Knights of Riser come at me. With the trio clash in a speed duel. As both knights tried to slash him, Kiba dodged them and tried anything to take advantage of the situation. However, both knights showed to be very good and crafty. He got a good opening on one of the knights he would almost immediately be put on defense as the other will try to strike him, which would force him to dodge or block it with his sword. This went on for several minutes, trying to find an opening for using his sacred gear, but he was unable, that's until he heard Issei shouted at him. Returning to Issei he was starting to get really pissed as he heard Ravel's laugh at the announcement that Grafia made. At that moment Issei's sacred gear started to glow bright red before it changes its shape, all the while Drake's voice was heard. Booster gear. Second liberation. Instead of a simple gauntlet that had a green jewel and two golden spikes in its place was now a more dragon-like gauntlet that went from his hand all the way to his elbow. It gained another jewel and instead of two golden spikes, it had ten. Partner congratulations your emotion help you get that little bit of power needed to unlock next level of booster gear, you also unlocked a new ability of gear. Use it with a blonde knight if you want to save your master. Drag informed him as he nodded and looked towards Kiba. Kiba use your sword bird on me now. 
Issei shouted to the knight making him look at him in shock before nodding. All right Issei, here it comes. Sword birth. As soon as Kiba slammed his blade into the ground, it sent a massive energy blast towards Issei, who waited for it to get near him, before doing what Drake said to him mentally. Just as it was about to hit him. Issei slammed his armored arm into the ground as the blast begun to be a poured into the gear. Drake do it no he yelled. Roger that. Transfer. As soon as those words were spoken by the dragon. The earth began to shake as hundreds of sword erupted from the ground catching everyone by surprise. As Ravel and her fellow pieces started to evade they were eventually skewed by half of the dozen sword of all shapes and sizes. They all glowed before disappearing, the only one who survived that assault was Ravel, thanks to her regeneration and her quick maneuvering. Lord Riser's bishop, two knights, two pawns retired, huh? Issei said confused as he was sure that they got all of them. Well done is Issei lookout Kiba started to congratulate him only to push him to the side as an explosion erupted near their spot and the dust obstruct the area. As the dust settled Issei saw Kiba on the ground with his clothes are tattered and ruined. Kiba, are you okay the red dragon emperor rushed to his comrade only to see him glow. I will be fine Issei, just defeat Riser. He weakly said to Issei as he disappeared in a glow. Lady Rhea's knight retired. Both Lord Razor and Lady Rhea's have two pieces remaining, the announcement was made. Ufufuf it looks like Queen takes both Queen and a Knight. The voice was heard as Issei jerk his head to the direction of the voice to see Ubaluna flying a little bit away with a good chunk of bruises and cussed, no doubt it was from Akeno, as she didn't fell down without a good fight. As much as I would love to defeat you little pawn I must go to my master, he is expecting you. Please hurry. Ubaluna told him as she headed to the roof where Rias and Rainer are fighting Riser. Might as well get this over with. Issei muttered as he walked towards Riser's base. Lady Rhea's pawn is available to promote. Promotion Queen Issei shouted feeling more powerful as his piece change. Partner, you do know that, in your state, you have little to no chance of beating him in your current condition, right? Drake asked his host as he knew that even though he had the power, he was exhausted from the constant battle and the beating he got on the track field. Yeah, I know that Drake, but I still have to try. He responded tiredly. As he was half running to the roof he was meet face to face with the blonde bishop. Peasant why don't you just retired and finish your suffering? Both of us know that this is over. Ravel spoke as he just looked at her. I came all this way, might as well see it to the end. And for your information I have a name it's Issei. He answered as he just walked past her and towards the roof. Idiot the blonde thought as she just casually walked towards the exit of their base, already knowing how this is going to end up. It took Issei a minute to come to the roof, when he came he was not surprised. Riser looked as fresh as if he just woke up from a good night's sleep. Rias, on the other hand, looked tired and sweetie. Rainer was the same as her king. Take this riser Rias shouted as she launched another ball of destruction at riser. Only to calmly take the blast to the head without even flinching. Is that the best you've got Rias? If it is you might as well forfeit now. Riser said calmly as the part where he was hit regenerated instantly. Never, Lord Riser it looks like the red dragon emperor has arrived. Ubaluna told him as he turned to look at Issei. Ah, so peasant has come. It looks like Ravel failed to defeat you. No matter riser will do it. Yeah, I came you stupid fried chicken. Issei answered him in an exhausted voice. Why you disrespecting nobody? He snarled as he sent a ball of fire at him only for Issei to retaliate with his own attack. Dragon shot. The attacks hit each other as they fought for supremacy. It didn't take long for Issei's attack to go throw and hit Riser as he calmly took it. Not bad, but this is over. If you had a few months of training that attack would hurt like a bitch. But fortunately for me, you didn't. Riser spoke as he was impressed that even tired and beaten to shit Issei could still outpower his attack, thought moderate attack, but nevertheless still powerful. He vanished only to appear in front of Issei as he landed a fist in his gut, then in the face. Issei tried to retaliate but was failing miserably not having any more stamina to battle the phoenix in front of him. As Riser continued to hit him, Issei tried to get a shot on him with his dragon shoot, but Riser was quicker and stooped any attempt. As the one-sided fight went on, Rias nor Rainer could help Issei as they were in danger that Riser's queen could attack them the moment they made a move, which would be a disaster. And there was also Ravel who could defeat them alone with little trouble as she was also fresh, and they were not. Riser took this opportunity to punish Issei for his bad-mouthing him and insulting him. A being of Nobel birth. After five minutes of brutality, Riser stopped to look at Rias and see her eyes were full of tears. Which gave him an idea how to finish this quickly. Lifting Issei's almost unconscious body he created a massive fireball. Rias this is your final warning. Forfeit a riser will burn him to a crisp. Seeing no way out and not wanting to lose Issei, Rias surrendered to her faith. Hein, you win. Just don't hurt my pawn anymore riser. I surrender. Rias weakly said, her tears freely flowing not being able to hold them back. Lady Rias surrendered, the match goes to Lord Riser. Grafia stated as all of them were transported towards the hospital wing.
Upon arriving at the hospital wing. Ria's at once rushed over to Issei and hugged him tight and started crying. What kind of a king she was when she was nearly willing to sacrifice him. Just for another minute or two of fighting a losing battle. Riser was way beyond her level, and now she knew she could never forgive herself if she let Issei die. Ria's the wedding will be in three days. I will see you then my lovely wife. Riser stated he and the rest of his peerage that were healed teleported away. The moment earlier Issei passed out was before he heard that Ria's had surrendered. As his wounds were treated and he was teleported back to his room. In his mind, Issei was awakened by Drake who was looking down towards his partner laying down on his back to the ground, his head on the lap of the beautiful girl who had a long curly blonde hair that extends all the way down her back and dark blue eyes. She was wearing a red dress with golden accessories that showed her remarkably large breasts. The first thing that Issei saw when his opened his eyes were two dark blue eyes staring at him with a large smile on her face that made Issei wonder as she was an angel. Partner, it's good to see you wake up after that fight. Drake told him as Issei turned his head to see his partner in his full glory. That immediately told him that he was in his mind where the red dragon could manifest his form. Now now Drake let him rest a little more like this, I'm enjoying seeing his face like this. The blonde said as she started stroking his head gently. Drake am I in my mind? What happened in the match? Who won? Issei worriedly asked before noticing that his head was on the blonde's lap, and who are you? The girl looked at the ancient dragon waiting for him to answer the boy's questions before she introduces herself to him. To answer your questions partner, yes you are now in your mind, your king surrendered the match because that phoenix threatened to burn you. If she doesn't throw the match. But even so, you put a good fight out there. I'm pleased how far you have gotten. Drake answered him honestly. He had gotten a good fight, even if his host lost, it was a very good fight that showed the red dragon emperor what could he aspect from his host. When Issei heard the news, he just started to shake in anger at the thought of Riser burning him alive. He swore that he will get his revenge on him someday, but at the same time, he was surprised that Riaz did what she did. He knew that she was selfish, a spoiled little princess that got everything handed to her on the silver plate. So maybe letting her be with Riser was a blessing in disguise. But then he remembered that there was another person here and that his head was on her lap. Returning his sight on the blonde hair girl, to him even more beautiful than Riaz, Akeno and Rainer. He saw that she had a warm and soft smile on her face, her dark blue eyes shine in excitement. He blushed at seeing her. Well looks like you finally decided to turn your attention to me. The blonde girl spoke in a soft and gentle voice. Why yes may I know who you are? He stuttered, blushing as he was mesmerized by her beauty. Of course. My name is Elsha. Former Booster Gear user and the champion of both Norse and Slavic pantheons. Elsha replied with a warm smile on her face. Nice to meet you Elsha. My name is Issei Haidu. But you can also call me Ice. Issei said with a blush on his face as he stood and bowed to, where she then gave him a little cute pout, but later giggle. If you foo I liked it more when your head was on my lap, but no later, it's nice to meet you finally. I heard from Dreg a lot of things about you. Elsha spoke as she also stood up giving Issei a good look at her. His face went crimson red at seeing her, to say that she was like a goddess on earth would be an understatement. Partner, Elsha here is the strongest female user of the gear, and the second strongest to wield it. Drake informed him as his eyes widened in shock that the person in front of him was that strong. Ufufuf, yes that's right Ice, they called me North Red Dragon. She told him with a smile. Issei was stunned. Before him stood one of the strongest users of the gear he now had. Her presence alone had placed an incredible amount of pressure on him, he was sure that she was suppressing her power a lot. Wow, that's cool. But I have a question. He said in awe. Was it because of me that you have an affinity to Norse and Slavic magic? Why yes, how did you know that I was going to ask that? But simple I since I slowly started to awaken, some of my powers were reaching you. That in turn, helped you improve a little at magic. But from what Drake told me, you are still suffering in that department. So I will help you train you so that you could be a good magician also. She said with a warm smile on her face, seeing Issei's face turn from shocked into excited in a moment. Really, you are going to train me? He said with excitement, barely containing his joy at getting to train with one of the most powerful people. Yes, yes I am. And Drag is also going to train you with it you could get stronger. She replied. Issei was so filled with joy that he started jumping in excitement. That's right partner, you have now enough strength for us to continue our training. And with Elsha's help, you will be strong enough to beat that dame phoenix. Drag told him in a voice that was full of power and bloodlust. Issei shiver at the voice that his partner used. He still remembered when Drake trains him and it was worse than if he was going to beat the fried chicken and get himself free, he needed to endure it. Don't worry Ice, I'm pretty good in healing magic as well as the others. Whatever damage you take I can heal it. Though even if you are badly injured, here it won't affect your body in the real world. Alsha told him seeing him going a little white at what the dragon told him. 
she knew how fierce Drake took the training and combat, so she wasn't that surprised at his reaction. That seemed to do a trick as a say calm down a little bit. Thank you Elsha. He blushed and thanked her sincerely. If you foo it's no problem ice. She giggled at him seeing that he turned completely red. Partner, it's time for you to awaken in the real world. What I've heard is that the wedding is going to be in three days, when you go to sleep we will then train. With Elsha's help you will get stronger in no time. Drake informed him as Issei just nodded at closed his eyes again. Talk to you guys when I wake up. During the talk between the Red Dragon Emperor, Elsha and Issei in his dream, in the real world, Issei was lying down in his bed with Grafia sitting on his computer chair watching him rest. Rest as much as you can Issei, what Rias did to you is something that even her brother wouldn't do. I know what you want, and I know you will manage to beat Riser, and hopefully you can free and save my sister from herself. Grafia sadly thought as she still remembered her little sister. Chapter 8. Girls Talk. While Issei was busy with his training for the raiding game with Rias and her gang. The kendo duo was also busy training in their swordplay and study in school. Thought they would also from time to time talk about how they would train Issei in suppressing his pervert nature to a more tolerable level. This pattern was going on for a few days as the girls waited for Issei's return. But that all changed one day. As the girls were walking towards their home from school, they were meet with the sight of a very familiar auburn-haired girl that they meet at Issei's place. Telsey was on the bridge looking into the distance when she felt two people approaching her. Turning around she found the kendo duo walking towards her. Well one was looking at her in surprise the other was glaring at her, which she had a good idea why she was acting that way which made her smirk. Just seeing her made Mureyama immediately glare at Auburn Hair Girl. She still hated Chelsea for trying to steal her essay from her. And seeing her here alone and with no one on the site made a perfect opportunity to get to bottom of this. Well, well, well what are you doing here Chelsea? Issei isn't here if you are looking for him. Mureyama spoke first, her voice was cold and emotionless. I already know that my darling is on a training trip and that he will come back in a day or two. I talked to him before he left so I already know what's happening. Chelsea dismisses it with a wave of her hand. Why you talk to him? When? Cadis asked in a shocked voice. She along with Mureyama didn't expect that from the girl in front of them. Oh, that. Well, I think it was an on a day when he left for a training trip. Chelsea nonchalantly told them with a smirk as she saw Mureyama going red with anger and jealousy. And why Issei didn't tell is that. Mureyama asked her as her eyebrows twitched. Hmm, maybe he didn't tell you because you are an annoying little girl. Chelsea said with her smirk widening as she saw Mureyama's face being even redder as she grabbed her kendo sword and took up her battle stance. Ahaha you really think you can beat me? Even Issei will need at least 4-5 boosts to get to my level of power. What makes you think that you have a chance? Chelsea laughed at seeing her attempt to intimidate her. Mureyama was now beyond pissed. She was really close to attacking the girl in front of her and chopping her head off. Maybe I'm not stronger than you little flat chest girly. But I can still at least chop your limbs you piece of shit. Oh, now I remembered your strength is in stealth, but in one on one you are weakling Mureyama mocked her, and from the look on Chelsea's face, her little jab worked as Chelsea faced her fully getting into her own stance. You will pay for that insult you slut. Chelsea told her in a low cold tone that sent shivers down the duo's spine. At that moment Cadis decided to intervene so there won't be any blood lost or limbs lost in the battle that would happen soon. Wait, don't fight each other. Think about what Issei would say about you two fighting Cadis shouted as she runs and stood in between the two, with her hand stretched towards them to keep them away from each other. That did the trick as both of them a few times before they went red at the thought of Issei scolding them for being so immature and stupid. What do you both say that we go somewhere we can talk this out? without killing each other in the process. Cadis asked in a calm voice at seeing the two girls still red from anger and embarrassed. The duo just nodded and they followed the pink hair girl as she started walking toward the nearby cafe in total silence. As they were sat in the cafe with their drinks on the table, Cadis decided to begin the conversation and break the awkward silence that followed them from the bridge accident. So what are you doing here Chelsea? Cadis finally said in a soft voice. Delcy hummed for a moment before sighing sadly and answering her in a tender voice. Hum honestly, I don't want to be anywhere near my faction, since their goals have become messed up so much that sickens me. I would love to stay here near Issei than be there with my faction. What happened to them to change their goals? This time Yurayama asked. Her previous aggression disappeared as she looked into Chelsea's sad face. Chelsea sighed again. What happened is not important, what is, is what I would do from now on. Since I'm pretty sure that they won't give me up that easy and Issei since he is a red dragon emperor. Eh? Both Cadis and Mureyama ask in surprise. What I mean by that is, if they can't have us alive then they are going to try and kill us. Now let's say they can't get to us, they will target you two and his parents to get to us. Chelsea elaborated making the two kendo girls turn white. W why would they do that? Cadis questioned fearing for her life now. That simple. 
because the power that Issei has is very sought after. It has a potential to kill God and Mayu in the right hands. Chelsea answered in a tired voice clearly not really wanting to talk about it. Seeing that they wanted to say something to her, she raised her hand to stop them. I will tell you about them at a later date I promise. When both girls nodded, she smiled gratefully at them before it turned into a mischief one. She shot a teasing grin towards the brunette and pink hair girls, which made them uneasy. Though I'm interested. I know that both of you hate perverts, so how is it possible for both of you to have feelings towards one of the biggest perverts in the school? Chelsea asked loving the fact that she now had a full reign to tease the girls without Issei here to stop her. That question made both Cadis and Mureyama turn as red as Issei's gauntlet. W what are you talking about? Mureyama stuttered a little her face becoming redder even more. Why yeah we don't have feelings for him. Kata spoke with a cough into her fist, but her face was changing to the color of her hair, making Chelsea think that if it goes even a little bit more, she would have to think that her face was covered by her pink hair. Yeah right, I saw how Mureyama acted the first time we meet and then at the bridge. So you can spare me with that bullshit. Now do tell, I love a good romantic story. Chelsea spoke as she leaned forward to better listen to what the two girls had to say. The two girls looked at each other for a moment conversing mentally on how to go about this before they nodded and turned to still leaning forward Chelsea. Fine we will tell you, but if you tell anyone else and especially a say about this, I'm really going to chop your head off. Mureyama told her in a low voice that promised pain. You have my word on that girlfriend. My lips are sealed. Chelsea spoke as she made a motion to show that her lips are sealed. Ah uh, where to begin? Mureyama mumbled before she snapped her fingers ah uh, yes that could work. Fine Chelsea here is how it began for me. Flashback, the 13-year-old Mureyama was walking down the halls of the Kuo Middle School, going to her first class of the year. As she was about to enter her classroom she heard a male shout in the background which prompted her to turn around and see who shouted. The moment she turned around was the moment that the boy collided with her sending both of them on the floor. Crash. As they found themselves on the floor, Mureyama looked up to see who was her assailant, only for her to blush at seeing a brunette boy her age on top of her, his face buried into her still developing chest. She blushed even more when he groaned into her chest as he slowly started lifting his head to show her who he was. As he lifted his face Mureyama's heart stopped for a moment as she saw him. His short light brown hair, light brown eyes, good looks and above average body. All of that was making her face even redder. It was like a dream come true for her. He looked perfect in her eyes. Uh. Sorry about that. I was late for class so I sprinted towards it and couldn't stop in time, he apologized as he stood up and gave her a hand to help her up. And no, no, it's fine I wasn't quick enough to move away. Mureyama told him shyly as her face was still red. Sweet. Thought what's your name? From the looks of things we are in the same class. The brown hair boy exclaimed as he saw that both him and the brown hair girl were going to the same classroom. Mureyama was in heaven when she heard that both of them were in the same class. She wondered if he was single since she wouldn't mind being with him. And my name is Mureyama Yamazaki. And yours. She shyly answered his question before asking for his name. The brown boy smiled softly at her making her knees a little weak at his charming smile that took her breath away. My name is Issei Haidu, it's nice to meet you Mureyama. He politely said as he bowed a little. And nice to meet you to Issei Haidu. She replied with a little bow of her own. But before any one of them could say anything more the bell was heard prompting the duo to enter the class. From that encounter with him, Mureyama was starting to fall for Issei, and from that day she would slowly start to love him. As the time in middle school passed away, Mureyama started to notice that Issei was turning to be a big pervert that was more into woman body than anything else day by day, but he still kept being polite and helpful to everyone in need. He was also gentle towards her and tried everything to make her not hate in her opinion, it was impossible for her to hate him, even when he started peeping at her. She was flattered that he did it, and even when she catches him and beats him up, she did it with absolute minimum strength. Mureyama didn't mind very much that Issei peeped if it was her. Sure she hated when other perverts peep on her, but if the one that took her heart did it, she was fine. Well Mureyama didn't mind him being a pervert, the bad reputation he has gotten was something she didn't like that much. So slowly she started to ignore him in the hopes that he will understand that he needed to change his ways. But unfortunately for her, her crush begun to become even worse. Which left her almost emotionally destroyed. What happened to you Issei? What made you become this way? Mureyama sadly thought as she was slowly destroying herself from inside out. She did have feeling for Issei, but didn't have the courage to tell him, and she thought that cost her Issei's perverted sight to show up. So when she met Kata Saito she was relieved that she was almost the same as her. She also hated perverts, and while Mureyama still wouldn't hit Issei hard, Kadis had no such restraint, as she hit him as hard as she can. Flashback end, as Mureyama told them both about her past with Issei, she was almost in tears at seeing the one she loves in such state, and she knew that if she confronted him and told him about it, maybe she could have stopped it. And that's what happened between us. 
Yes, he was a pervert even back then, but anything I asked him to do he would have done it without a second guess. Murayama told them with watery eyes. Wow, I knew that he was a nice person, but that he would do anything for you. Chelsea spoke a little shock at the revelation. Yeah, he really was nice to me. And I still think that if I ask him for anything he will do it for me, but after what he told us Murayama wanted to say it, but couldn't so Cadiz finished her sentence. About what happened at his last date made him fragile and. Cadiz finished it in a sad tone. W what happened on his last date? Chelsea asked dreading the answer that she might get. I Ice W was murdered by R. Rayner, the girl that is now Rhea's bishop. Murayama answered not having any restraint as she started to sob with her tears freely flowing down her cheeks. H you was what? Chelsea asked in pure shock as her face went white. You didn't know about that? Cadiz questioned in surprise. And no I didn't know that since I arrived about a month and a half ago. And from what I managed to gather he was a devil for two months so I didn't know. If I did I would have killed that fallen bitch. Chelsea told the both of them while her fist went white with rage. Yeah, that what we learned from him, and I know he is afraid of us not so much from beating he got from us, but from Rainer who used his good side. Kata sadly spoke as she also knew that even thought Issei was a colossal pervert, that after talking with Murayama about a man seeing for herself that he still respected and cared, does that were close to him made her change her opinion of him. Though she would never tell him that out loud she was starting to see past his perverted nature and dedication, action toward those he treasure was something that she admired. After that, all three girls went silent thinking about their love interest. And little did they know they were all attracted toward him by his kindness and his honesty. What all three didn't know it was also his dragon aura that made them go to him. They were attracted towards him like flies towards the light. As they were all in their little world, all of them begin to remember their moments with him where they found it cute and funny. Cadis flashback, that back here you perverts. Cadis along with Murayama yelled as she and members of Kendo Club were giving chase to three boys who were running for their lives. Hell no the bald boy answered as he was in front of his group. Come on Mitsuda we can't outrun them Cadis and Murayama will catch us, the boy with glasses told Mitsuda as he was starting to lose his breath and slightly slow down. Come on guys we need to get on Motohama I got you. The brown haired boy said as he took his friend by the arm and started to pull him to go faster. Yeah, Issei is right, we need to hurry, let's make a distraction. Mitsuda said with an evil glint in his eyes that did get unseen by Issei, but didn't go unseen by Motohama, who also had an evil glint in his eyes. Mitsuda is right. Motohama said as he forcefully stopped making Issei fall on his back as Motohama sprinted away. Sorry man, but you have to take on for the team. When Issei finally stood up he found himself surrounded by the kendo club. But before he could get beaten to shit, two voices intervened. You girls, go and get the other two. Murayama spoke as she pointed her shinai towards Issei who gulped. We will take care of him. Kata said as she followed Murayama's suit and pointed her shinai at Issei. Yes captains. The girls answered before running off to give the other two boys their punishment. With the girls gone the duo captains turned their attention towards the brunette who paled at seeing them getting closer to him. Now Issei I promise you that this isn't going to hurt us at all you, on the other hand will hurt a lot. Kata stated before both girls started to beat Issei. Flashback end, Addis giggled a little bit before she remembered and flinched a little because that was the time when Murayama also beat her down when she hid Issei in the family treasure. That was the first time that Murayama took her anger and frustration on her instead on the perverts. And Cadis made Wove to never temper Murayama in fear of what she would do to her if she heard Issei that way. That thought brought her out of her daydreaming as she remembered that there was also one more person with them and from all affection that person gave Issei, it was clear to her that she also had feelings for him. Delcy, you also have feelings for ice. Kat is suddenly asked making both Murayama and Chelsea blink from a sudden question. W what are you talking about? Chelsea nervously asked as she stole a quick glance towards Murayama, who narrowed her eyes at her making Chelsea gulp. I asked, do you have any fi Caddis began to repeat her question before Chelsea stopped her. I, I heard you the first time. She quickly said before for taking a deep breath. Yeah, I do have feelings for him. Chelsea confessed as she saw Murayama and Caddis's fist go white. So you do have. Murayama asked her tone low. Yes, I do have feelings for him, but I started to have them towards him a little before we all started interacting. Hearing the silence from the two Chelsea decided to continue. Well, it all started when I first saw him, Chelsea told them as she started to tell them. Flashback, oh come on, where am I going to find the Red Dragon Emperor? Chelsea muttered as she was making her way through the streets of Kuo. It was as luck would have it that Issei was running toward the abandoned church with Kiba and Kaneko. Delcy couldn't believe her moment she was whining about where to found the emperor only for him to run past her with two others. Well, that was easy. Thought why are they running towards the church? Chelsea thought as she was wondering why they would go there. Deciding to follow them she caught the sight of two more devils fighting three fallen angels. 
and from the looks of things, it looks like Devils launched a surprise attack on them. What are the Fallen doing here in the Devils' territory in the first place? Chelsea asked herself that as she continued to watch the two Devil girls fight the Fallen. It didn't take long for the Devils to overpower the Fallen, as the red-haired girl shot her magic, completely obliterating the opponent she was facing. Ikeno, let's go see how Issei did on his end. The red-haired girl told her companion as they started walking towards the back entrance of the church. Yes, President. Akeno answered as she followed her in. Seeing this Chelsea masked her presence and activated her sacred gear and transformed into a crow and took off with them. As they entered Chelsea felt strong dominated aura coming from somewhere, making her stop her pursuit of the devil girls. What's this powerful aura I'm sensing? Chelsea thought as she thought whoever was there he had to be extremely powerful but even her sacred gear won't be able to help her. That's when she heard a powerful roar accompanied by the whole church shaking. I said is that understood? D that aura T that's the red dragon emperor's whoever, pissed him off better hope that he doesn't enter juggernaut drive or we all are good as dead. Chelsea was lost and afraid for her life. She heard how powerful juggernaut drive is and what it's capable and the thought alone made her go white. Luckily the extremely powerful aura that flooded everywhere was slowly vanishing, while Chelsea could still feel that after effect of it. She felt herself getting dominated and for some strange feeling she liked it and wanted it even more. So she decided to wait until all the devils left so she could get a better look on the emperor. It didn't take long for the devils to leave, leaving only a say in the church. When she made her way she saw him holding on to the blonde hair girl with tears in his eyes. That was something that greatly surprised Chelsea. She learned and was told that the dragon emperors were cruel, battle-hungry and merciless without even a slight feeling of remorse or pity. But seeing the great red dragon like this made her realize that what she learned and was told were very far from the truth. That sparked her interest in him even more, and she decided to figure out who he really was and what made him click. Flashback end. You could say that from that day forward, my interest in him increased a lot, even to the point that I don't know what to think. Chelsea told them, as the girls looked at her a little shock at what they heard about his say and her little confession. Silence settled between the three girls as all three of them were absorbing what the other two said. Wow, it takes a lot to piss his say off that's for sure. Mireyama voiced her thoughts to break the silence between them. Yeah, I mean we beat him down so many times and yet he didn't even snap once at us. Though truth be told, we didn't do anything that cruel to him as letting him die. Caddis agreed with her brunette friend as she understood that it was extremely hard to make Issei angry. Delcy nodded her head, also knowing that to be the truth. She intruded into his house and although he did show hostilities he didn't go and attack her on the spot because of that. Now though, do you girls have any ideas how to make Ice less perverted? He did ask us to help him after all. Caddis voiced a valid question. Delcy hearing that got a teasing smirk on her face that got the attention of the other girls. Oh, I know a perfect way how to decrease his perverted nature. Please do tell, we are all ears. Caddis had also starting to have a smirk on her face. Well dot dot he I think we should provoke him and when we see that he starts to go into his pervert mode, we punish him. And also give him some physical training also. Chelsea said with a smirk. She is going to enjoy sucking Ice's life dry. Addis and Mureyama looked at each other and nodded. It wasn't the best plan, but it was better than nothing. Sure, you got yourself a deal. When Issei returns we are going to begin training him. Mureyama told Chelsea whose smirk turned even bigger. And I know the perfect places to begin it. The swimming pool, that way we can enjoy ourselves and punish ice at the same time. Kata said in mischief voice. Now that sound like a plan I would gladly follow. Plus to make it more interesting let's make a bikini competition between the three of us to see who is better in Issei's eyes. Chelsea added with a grin at seeing the other two girls turn red. But their little plan for Issei all set. The girls change subject to some other things as they continue to get to know each other and become friends. Chapter 9. Flashbacks. It's been a few hours after the game between the houses of Gremory and Phoenix. While mostly everyone in the Gremory peerage was healed and rested. Only the pawn of the peerage was still unconscious after the beating he has gotten from Riser. With their ace in the hole in bed sleeping, the peerage decided to start preparing for the hated marriage party that they had to attend. Do you think Issei will be alright? Akeno asked as she entered Issei's room to bring some food for Grafia, who was patiently sitting in one of the chairs in the room. Yes, you don't need to be worried about him Akeno. He will be alright, he did take some serious damage and exhausted himself from the fight. Thank you for the food. Grafia replied as she gracefully took the food and thanked the Queen of Rias for it. It's no problem Grafia. Thank you for keeping an eye on him. We appreciate it. Akeno spoke as she bowed to the strongest queen and exited the room leaving both Issei and Grafia alone. As Grafia continued to watch over Issei while eating the food she got from Rhea's queen. She couldn't help but remembered what she was told by her sister-in-law about the Red Dragon Emperor. She trusted Rhea's, but the way she acquired him didn't make sense to her. It was as it was all set up too perfectly to be the truth. 
And she was worried that what might had happened was the worst case. Flashback, as Riaz was reading over some papers related to the devil business, she suddenly felt a magic circle forming in her clue room. Seeing it belonged to her clan she expected it to be from either her brother or his wife. Which moments later showed that she was right as the latter appeared through it wearing her normal maid outfit. Grafia, it's nice to see you. How are you been doing? Riaz asked not showing her uncomfortableness that she felt at seeing her. Riaz, it's also nice seeing you. I'm good though I'm here on the orders from your brother to tell you that you have less than two months to prepare for Riser. He started to pressure for the marriage. Grafia explained seeing Riaz flinch and starting to get angry at the message. I thought that I still had time till that cursed marriage, Riaz shouted to no one in particular, as she was getting even angrier at the thought of her and Riser. Yes you did, but Riser along with the elders are pushing this. Well, I do have someone in my peerage that will force Riser into the raiding game, and Riser will lose to him. Riaz confidently said to the maid. And who do you have that can beat him? Maid asked not knowing who in the Riaz peerage was strong enough to beat Riser. That's easy, I have found Red Dragon Emperor, and he is now my servant. Riaz told her in the voice full of pride and confidence. Grafia hearing that Riaz has acquired the legendary beast, had her eyes wide for a second before she got her shock under wraps. Though, that begged the question on how she was able to convince the heavenly dragon to become her servant. It was common knowledge that dragons loved their freedom. And how did you manage to get him to become your servant? Grafia questioned her sister-in-law. Riaz clearly didn't expect Grafia to question it, sweating a little bit, Riaz quickly lied in a convincing voice. When I found him in school, I approached him and asked him to come to my club room. After that, I explained to him that I could sense a great power within him and that he would be approached by other supernatural beings and that he would be in danger. After he understood it, I convinced him to join my peerage which he accepted. And from then on, it's all history. Riaz quickly lied to her, hoping that Grafia will buy it. Grafia for her part just nodded, but it was something about what Riaz said that made her suspicious. She knew that Riaz was like a mother to her peerage, but she also knows too well that Riaz was too prideful to go out of her way to warn some human being, even if it had a powerful aura around him. She could only hope that she didn't do anything stupid to the Red Dragon Emperor, because that would be catastrophic. But for now, she would accept her words. But all said and done Grafia excused herself and left, leaving Riaz to sigh in relief at the close bullet that she dodged. Flashback end. As Grafia was eating her food she suddenly heard a grunting sound coming from Issei's bed. Lifting her head a little, Grafia saw Issei sitting up and looking around a little confused. I see that you have awoken Issei, that's good. Grafia told him making him turn his head around to look at her. Where am I? Was all Issei could say as he was still confused about his surroundings. You are in your room Issei, I brought you here too after your injuries were healed at the infirmary. Grafia answered him as he looked around his room before returning his gaze at the maid. I see, so what happens now? Drake told me that Rhea surrendered to that bastard. Issei spoke, his voice full of hatred. I was assigned to give you this pamphlet when you woke up so you could get to the party. Grafia spoke as she handed him a pamphlet with a Gremory's magic circular. Um, what do you need of me Grafia? Issei asked as he took the paper from the maid. I'm here more as a messenger Issei, my master said to tell you this, if you wish to free my sister, crash the party. Those were his words Issei, the party is in three days. Grafia told him as she prepared a circle to go, but was stopped when she heard Issei say something that made her widen her eyes. Hell no, I'm not going to help that murderous bitch that let me die for her own gain. Issei mumbled to himself, but to Grafia it was loud and clear. Turning around Grafia looked at Issei who was still holding the paper she gave him however his eyes were full of hatred and if you looked closely, you would have seen his eyes turning from his brown to Drake's green. She felt pity for the boy as she remembered that her own sister was in serious trouble that might end up terrible for her. So she decided to stay a little longer and see why he said what he said. Issei, what do you mean about letting you die? She softly asked him making him flinch a little at that since he forgotten that Grafia was still here. Issei looked up from the pamphlet he was given with a sigh and gestured for Grafia to take a sit which she did as he started to explain what he meant. Did Rias ever tell you that I was Red Dragon Emperor before the that night? Issei asked. Nodding her head she replayed him. Yes, two months before the raiding game she said that she gained a Red Dragon Emperor as her servant. And did she mention how she had gained him? Issei questioned feeling his blood slightly starting to boil from anger. She told me that she found you at school and she approached you and asked you to come to the club room where she explained everything to you and where you accepted to become her servant. Grafia told him what Ria said to her about him. Issei was at first shock, then his shock vanished with it being replaced with extreme rage about the lie she used to tell Grafia. His eyes started to turn green as his aura flared out making his house shake from it alone. Even though Grafia was way stronger than him, she was still in awe at the power that Issei had in him. The moment Issei's aura exploded she knew that what Riaz told her was a lie, and now she knew that she was going to hear the truth, and she would like it. 
It took a few minutes for Issei to calm himself before telling Grafia the truth of how she gained him. That bitch I should kill her now Issei whispered to himself but was again hurt by Grafia. As much as you want to kill her, you can't Issei, you would become stray and then be hunt down till you're dead. Grafia told him. She knew that her master and husband would kill Issei in a flash if he hurt her, let alone kill her. I know that, but still. He sighs heavily before taking a deep breath calming himself. Know this Grafia, what she told you was a complete lie. What she did, W was letting me get killed by my date and then swooping in and reviving me. If she did what she told you I would have gladly accepted her offer of becoming a devil. But she didn't go down that path, so you can understand why I'm not going to help her and I don't give a flying buck about her. I hope she suffers. Issei explained to her in the shortest version he could, he still had nightmares from that date. Grafia was in complete shock when she heard his story, she now understood why he was completely against helping Rias, and if Serzichas did that to her, she would have ripped his head off. Though Issei's next words gave her small hope for both him and her sister. All I ever wanted was to be loved by someone. I know I'm a huge pervert, but still, what I went through and I still stand to that, the only reason I fought Riser was so that I would be closer to getting to high class and breaking free from her, and I hate guys like him even if he was like me not too long ago. Grafia just stood there and listened to him as he let all of his emotions out. Issei was an emotional person she could see that clearly, so she just stepped closer to him, and before he could do anything she embraced him in a warm hug. Let it all out Issei, I can see that you are still hurt from what she did, I know it's hard, but you have to keep going if you ever want to break loose from her. Grafia told him in a soft and warm voice that made Issei cry. He was emotionally in such mess that he needed to tell someone how he felt and let all of it out of his system. Grafia understood this, so she put it on herself to be his support until he was ready to move on. Issei cried in her embrace for nearly 10 minutes before managing to get control over himself. Eh sorry Grafia for seeing me like this and for ruining your outfit. Issei apologized to the maid as he tried to get himself out of Grafia's grip, but she wouldn't let him. Issei, what would you do if I told you that there is one person that is in similar pain that you are in? That the person is so emotionally in chaos that it nearly sent her to insanity? Grafia softly asked still holding tightly to Issei. Trying to see what would be his reaction to her question. Issei, hearing that immediately answered her without thinking. He was that kind of the guy, he would always help anyone in need without question. I would do whatever it takes to help that person. When Grafia heard his reply causing her to smile at him and tightened her grip on him. Issei, I am going to tell you a story about that person and I hope that you would truly help her since she desperately needs it. Nodding his head, Grafia released him and motioned for him to sit as she took the chair she was sitting in not too long ago. What I'm about to tell you Issei is the story about my little sister and what made her almost go insane. No one knows about it and I hope you will keep what I tell you to yourself. Grafia told him in a serious tone that made it clear to him that if word about her got out, he would be in unimaginable pain. Issei gulped a little hearing her tone, but he nevertheless nodded which made Grafia smile again. Well, this all happened during the Devil's Civil War. Flashback, it was moments before the final battle of the war. Both sides were gathering their troops in position for the showdown that would finally end this needless bloodshed and bring peace to the realm of the Devils. On one side of the battlefield was the old Satan faction, which was led by descendants of the original Maus, and on the opposing side was the anti-Satan faction, led by the strongest devils alive. The location for the battle was none other than the capital of the Devil's Lilith. As the battle started both sides pushed for supremacy in both land and air, the casualties were horrendous, so much so that even the largest battle in human history, the Battle of Kursk, during the Battle of Lilith as it was called. Two siblings were fighting against two other people. One of the two that the siblings fought was none other than their older sister Grafia, while the other was a red-haired man that looked to be in his late twenties. Grafia, I didn't know that you could fall so low that you sided with the traitors. Do we mean anything to you big sis? One of the siblings asked. He was a tall handsome looking youth in his early twenties, with long silver hair that went to a ponytail and red eyes. He was wearing a silver suit with some accessories. That's not true Euclid. I realized that if the descendants win there wouldn't be any of us anymore. They will make the devils go extinct, and that is one thing I don't want dear brother. Grafia replied as she blocked an attack from the other sibling that was a girl that looked like she was in her late teen year with short silver hair with light purple tone to it and dark blue eyes that were full of rage directed towards her sister for abandoning their cause. That doesn't matter big sis, our clan gave full loyalty to Lucifer and his clan. And you side with the enemy of his, that makes you our enemy now. The girl told Grafia as she attacked her again only for the red hair man to block it. Now, now Lucy I thought that you are smarter than this. The red hair man told the girl. You, Serzichas shut up if it wasn't for you, both my brother and I wouldn't have to battle our own sister, Lucy yelled as she started bombarding the duo with all she had in her. All of her rage went into her attacks that consisted of ice and lightning, her most powerful elements. 
The attack caught both Grafia and Serzich's by surprise. They knew that Lucy was powerful and to take her down, they would need a bit more power than any ordinary high-class devil. They both put their strongest barriers up to block her bombardment as it was going on, each hit on the barrier made a small crack in it. Thankfully to both members of the anti-Satan faction, the relentless attack stopped before it could break through their defense. Well the attack left Lucy exhausted for overusing her magic powers. Quickly using her exhausted state, Serzichas sent his attack at her hoping to put her out of commission and then battle Euclid without worrying about Lucy. But to both Grafia's and Lucy's shock Euclid positioned himself in front of Lucy and took the attack head-on, which caused a huge explosion to erupt where he stood that sent Lucy flying back a good 20 meters. As the debris was clearing it left the two girls in horror. Where Euclid stood now was only a 10 meter wide crater, with no trace of Euclid to be found, as if he never existed. Seeing that Grafia started crying as Lucy stood there shocked to the core, with the loss of her big brother, she was left broken and just surrendered with no will to fight anymore. Flashback end, after that battle. Lucy was imprisoned as a prisoner of war. Though a few months later she was released, but she is still unwilling to do anything, and she is almost always locked in our clan's estate where she rarely leaves it. She is now like a shell, all life left her that day. Grafia finished her story with a sad smile. Issei just listened to the story and was shocked at what he heard. He couldn't even imagine how it must have been for both girls to see their brother get killed in front of them. So Issei just stood up and hugged Grafia tightly surprising her. Is there any way to help your sister come out of her shell? He softly asked her, making Grafia's eyes widen at his question. I honestly don't know Issei, I hope there is. She replied. Nodding Issei just released her and turned around looking at the pamphlet he was still holding. What would you say Grafia? If I could help your sister. Would you help me get free from Ria's? He questioned turning around to look at the maid of the Gremory. The look of determination in his eyes gave her hope that he just might be able to help her. Without hesitation, she nodded with a smile. You have my word that I would support and help you in any way I can. That answer made Issei smile. Then we have a deal Grafia. I will help Ria's to get out of this marriage and will do whatever I can to help Lucy. And you will help me get away from Ria's. That is acceptable Issei Haidu. Now then I'll take my leave, remember you have only three days before the party. Use them well. With that said Grafia teleported away. When Grafia left Drag and Elsha decided to speak with Issei. That went better than expected. If I would say so myself Drag voiced his opinion on the deal Issei made with the maid. Yes, I'm also surprised at what she told you Issei. And that she accepted the deal you suggest. Elsha added her two cents also. Same here, but from what we heard I wouldn't be surprised at that, I would also seek help for my sibling without a question. As he started to remember what he was told from Grafia. Fair enough. Now though both Drag and I made your training schedule. Alsha told him, making Issei snap back to reality. You did? Yes, we did partner, the schedule is as such. While awake you will do the following. Run for 10 kilometers with weighted clothes, then do a series of exercises and final that would help you increase your stamina and physical strength. Drag started the training program a thing that Issei would do in the next three days. But when you go to sleep, we will pull you into the gear and train you in both magic, fire breath, and combat, so you can beat the Trizer guy. Elsha finished explaining the program that was planned. Well, that does sound good. And I can't wait to start. So let's go. Issei told both his partners in a voice full of excitement and joy. He was close to getting at that bastard who almost killed him. Oh, he could barely contain himself from excitement at the thought of kicking his butt. That's the spirit partner. We will show those little devils not to mess with us dragons. Drag roared with bloodlust as he was like Issei barely containing himself for some bird hunting. Seeing this Elsha just sighed to herself, it looked like she would need to be the one to put the two in line. But being a warrior herself, she could understand their view and their excitement for the battle. But for now, she needed to bring both the dragon and the host to their senses. Now, now as much as I would also like to tear that bird to pieces. We need you ice to train so you could be as strong as possible before kicking his butt. And Drag I know that you are battle hungry, but could you wait for it at least a few more days. Elsha told them both bringing them back to reality. Yes, you are right as always Elsha. Though in my defense I didn't hunt those birds for centuries so you can understand my bloodlust. Drag told her getting a nod of understanding from the second strongest user of booster gear. Sorry. No problem you two, but now Issei go and do what we told you, and when you go to sleep we will train you more. Elsha instructed Issei as he just nodded and run outside to start his training. After the full day of training, Issei was ready to go to sleep. He was surprised to see that no one from Rhea's peerage was present all day, not even her. But that only made him feel better as he was able to train in peace and talk to both Drag and Elsha without interference from the annoying Rhea's. As he laid in bed and started to drift off to sleep, he was immediately pulled into the sacred gear by no other than Elsha and Drag. 
Opening his eyes, Issei saw that he was on a meadow filled with all kinds of vegetation. It looked like heaven as the nature and aura around it were peaceful and calm. He was brought back to his senses when he heard a giggle coming from his right. Turning around he was meet with a sight that made him start to blush viciously, leaning against the tree was Elsha. She was wearing a crimson top with V-cut that showed some of her breasts with a pink skirt and black shoes, her long blonde hair was tied up into the ponytail. In Issei's eyes, she looked even more prettier than before. Seeing his face made Elsha giggle even more. She was enjoying the look on his face, she knew from Drake that he was a massive pervert and that he was trying to suppress it, but getting a reaction from him was priceless to her. Now Ice, I know that you are enjoying the view, but I brought you here to train. Elsha told him with a smirk that only grew when his eyes widened before he quickly turned around still red. Why yeah you did, so what are we going to do? Issei asked in a shy voice, still too embarrassed to look at her. Now, now my little Ice, you don't have to be embarrassed at all, you are doing well in keeping that side in you. Though if you want to take me on a date, you have to work a bit harder you know. Elsha told him in a sweet voice before winking at him in the end. Why why yeah Issei barely told her as he felt blood dripping from his nose and a little light-headed that the girl like her that surpass any model would say that so easily to him. Giggling a bit, Elsha compassed herself before becoming serious. Now Issei, first I will show the basics of Norse and Slavic magic, they are known for being really powerful and can be destructive in the right hands, Elsha explained as she created a small orb of magical energy that made Issei a little scared. What is that Elsha? He asked scared as he sensed the power in that small orb. You don't have to worry Issei, this is only a sample of the magic from both sides, while both are powerful individually combined they are deadly if you know how to use them. She explained to him in a tender voice with a warm smile that made Issei blush a little bit. So how can I do similar things like you? He asked, yes, though you will need time, I will start expanding your reserves slowly. She said as she sits on the ground and motioned to Issei to also sit. With him complying of what he was told by Elsha, she started expanding his magic reserves and telling him all about magic and how to improve it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.